Welcome back, everybody. It has been one year. Uh, Sandra, one year ago, we were just starting this channel and we wanted to do something fun to celebrate Christmas together. And we thought, you know what? Maybe people will want to watch us open and close our Christmas beer brackets. Happy holidays and welcome back to the second, the second annual Beer Brackets Christmas. Oh, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing great, my friend. I've been excited all day for this. Like this is, this is our Christmas party. This is our Christmas party. This is our work party. <laughs> One of our work parties, yes. but it's a work party. <laughs> yeah. Oh, geez, man. I've been looking forward to this. I've been looking forward to this all year. And you know what? Guys, I have a little bit of a news update to lay on everybody before we get started. Now, Sandro, you know about this already, so this isn't gonna be so much of a surprise to you, but for everyone who's been watching since the beginning, we have some news. We may have a lead on the white whale. We don't know. We may have a lead. I'm just gonna leave it at that, but that's a big update. Alessandro, I think we need to get right into it. We don't want to wait too long. We all have empty glasses in front of us right now. It's the holidays. We got to get festive with it. Yes. And you've been telling me for days now, if not weeks, how excited you are about these two beers. And I can't wait to see. I honestly cannot wait to see what the first one is. So please get started and let's see. What are you opening your 2021 Christmas brackets with? Your Christmas brackets. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, my friend. I am excited. And you'll see in just a second. So I am okay, opening okay. my Christmas beer brackets with this amazing beer called Spencer American Trappist. What? This is the only Trappist beer made in America. And it has the logo no. and everything. That's so cool. And wait, it's not, oh, it's not no. all. Uh, it, the, it's not all. The Abbey. What else could there be? It's uh, St. Joseph's. Abbey. So it, it, I thought like that was perfectly fitting. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a connection there, huh? A little bit of a connection. That's so cool, man. So they're the only American Trappist certified Correct. brewery that there is. Yes. I knew there was one, but you know what? I never, I don't remember the name of them. So that was, that's so cool that you have. <laughs> I, I found it on the shelf and, and not only is it the Trappist beer, but it's the Trappist holiday ale. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> I don't even know what to right. say. You took the opening Christmas beer bracket and you hit that ball right out of the park, my friend. Congratulations. I can't wait to hear about that one, but I'm, I'm really excited about this too, man. I'm really excited. I have never tried this beer and I thought what better time to try this. And it's a special occasion beer too. And you'll see why in a moment. And look at this cool fancy box. I actually told you about this one already when I spotted it in the store, but I splurged and I got it. The Fuller's Vintage Ale. So the 2021 Vintage Ale. Very limited release. Guys, we haven't talked about the Fuller's Brewery yet on the channel. They are a very historic brewery from the late 1800s out of Chiswick in England, out here in West London, I believe. And so every year they have a specialty, what they call their vintage ale that they release. And on their site, they say that what they do is they take the finest, the finest barley and the finest malts and ingredients from that year available. And they brew a special beer with those. The, the head brewers get together and decide which ingredients they want to play with. And they, and they brew a very limited edition special beer. And as you can see, it comes in this, um, it's a 500 milliliter bottle in a single little fancy box like this. It almost looks like a scotch I was gonna box. Say, it looks almost like a scotch. <laughs> it does look almost like a scotch. I have never tried this one before. I saw it on the shelf and I was just like, you know what? That's a little pricey for one beer if I'm just going to be drinking it on my own for no special reason, but Merry Christmas, my friend. Merry Christmas to you, my friend, or to us. Oh. Merry Christmas to us. Oh, that cool, Look at nice that. little distinguished. Can't wait to hear about this. That's label. exciting. And this one says it has like some pretty interesting notes that I'm really excited to, uh, to learn more about here. It says on the back, as with every vintage ale, this beer is brewed to mature over time because it is bottle conditioned. Another bottle conditioned beer. Let's crack these open and let's show the nice people at home what our opening beer brackets look like here. Oh, wow. This one has a really interesting smell right off the bat. It's really fruity. 8.5% alcohol, 
Let's see what this looks like. Yeah, this this one here is right at nine. And you know what? This one says pair with family and friends. So we're perfect here. It sounds like the perfect situation. Oh, look at that. It's kind of like a dark red amber ale with a really, really nice one and a half finger head there on it. Yours looks like almost it's a that's very quad like yeah it's it's a little bit lighter more on the ruby red but it's it's dark it's dark it and it has like a nice little head there it's not quite as um you know carbonated as uh, some of the quads that we we are familiar with but uh, it definitely mm -hmm. is leaning towards that Woo. Cheers. cheers my friend cheers happy holidays cheers my friend mm. Oh, wow. This one, it's interesting. It says it's bottle conditioned. It's not overly carbonated. It's very light, very, very light and fluffy. Not super carbonated though, just overall light in body. Very spicy, very fruity, very aromatic. What's yours like? I'm so curious, tell me about it. Oh, I was just processing it. It's, it's incredible, it's incredible. Have you tried this one before? I know, no, I haven't. Oh, I haven't. it's so a first. It's, it's a first for me as well. It's quite interesting. I find it, it's it, as I mentioned, it's 9%, but it doesn't really feel uh, that. Like it's very light, allow me that term. Like, and it's it's not light in the sense of the carbonation, but it really in the sense yeah. of how it drinks. Like you can't really feel the alcohol too much, but it's packed. I'm getting a little bit of the high alcohol beer sweats. Exactly. It, it, it's a, li a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. But it's packed with the, spices and, and 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 holiday spices let's put it that way very pleasantly uh, you know, orchestrated and uh and balanced it's not overly carbonated no. though no i wouldn't say so no compared to you know when you think trappist like all the ones we've had like normally mm. the carbonation is is up front like in this one here i would say uh, you know it's 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 toned down quite a bit so it's it's a different take on the, on the trappist beer i would say that sounds really interesting, man. That sounds really interesting. Did you choose that one for a reason? I chose this one for a reason because I really wanted to savor it. Because as guys, if you watched our first Christmas episode, you know that Alessandro and I have sent each other some mystery gifts. And so this was the beer that I chose to want to savor while we're opening those mystery gifts. It's a little fun tradition. We started to do a little beer, beer related gift exchange and send each other a little something. Would you like to open first or would you like me to open first? I'll let you decide. Okay, well, you know what? I, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, uh, I started mm -hmm. last year. I might be wrong. I don't remember. Did you? So, uh, but let's say it was me. So why don't you start this okay. time, my friend? You're always such a gentleman. Okay. So I think you you should start first this year. You are you're quite the gentleman, my friend. The Italian gentleman. Thank you, thank you. Likewise, my friend. So this came in Amazon <laughs> last week. It feels like it's kind of obvious what it is. <laughs> the cement brick. It's very square, very heavy, probably something used for construction, I would imagine. It's, um, it's very dense. It's actually a, uh, sorry, it's actually a bottle of Budweiser. I know you, you kind of <laughs> like this. <laughs> I do, man. Those bottles were really surprising. Yeah, it, it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, compared to the can. Mm -hmm. Go back and watch our Budweiser can versus bottle if you haven't seen it, but uh, very pleasantly surprised by the bottle. I have no, absolutely no idea what this uh, is. I'm, I'm, so let's I'm find excited out. for you to open it. It took me a while to figure out like what to send you and and what to pick, but I, I hope- It took me a while too, man. It took me a while too. Using my trusty knife. Normally I would do the safe cut again, which is just straight across over your hand and directly towards your eye. That because is the safe way to use a knife when opening the package. I decided to do it the unsafe way. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. It is. It felt like a book. It definitely, it felt like a book. And I'm right, it is a book. What is the book? <laughs> I'll show everybody before I look. I'm trying to get it out of the package, I don't wanna spoil it. Okay, I've got the back here. So let's see what this is. Reading the back, the great beer guide. <laughs> oh my God, I see Michael Jackson's signature. What is this? Oh my God, the great, Michael Jackson's the great beer guide. Yes, sir. This is, so, oh my God, this is so cool. I'll put like a nice sort of zoom in on this on the actual video, but you can see there's just, well, I'd imagine like probably every notable beer at least is featured in here. 
This is so cool, man. Thank you so much. You are so very welcome. I, I figured- Oh my God. Uh, we, we, we are ready for some guidance uh, from, from someone who has done this journey before. And I think that uh, this could, could help you also like, uh, and help us like, so why not? Like it's a uh, it's great little uh, words of wisdom coming from someone who knows about beer. I love this. It's almost like it was sent by Mr. Michael Jackson mm -hmm. himself. The great beer guide. Well, speaking of guidance and wisdom from someone who has made the journey, my friend, you go right ahead. Thank you, my friend. I Open yours. Say for me, I got this uh, this nice package, and, and almost like it happened before. <laughs> Joe messaged me and was like, "You you should have got like the the package." And I go out and look everywhere, can't find go it. Out of your neighbor's house again. And sure enough, they put it at the neighbor's house. Like so, I don't know. I'm gonna have to I can't have believe that. chat with those Amazon guys. Like you said, the the feel of it is not. I don't think it's a bottle of beer. It's probably not even a hmm. can. But we'll, we'll see. Might be a color TV. I'm excited. I can't wait to look through this book, man. I love how visual it is. Like every page is just a giant picture of that particular <laughs> beer, and then with the description next to it and everything you need to know. I was hoping uh, that it would have like, um, you know, the, uh, big, big pictures as well. So, that, you know, it does, visually it does. appealing. <laughs> oh, look here. I love yes. the color of this book already. Pint? Just the color of the book is enough. You could just put that on your bookshelf and just Pint? as it is. <laughs> it's amazing. Pint size Ireland. That's. It is a diary so to speak the story of traveling around searching for the best pine of guinness what 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 possible gift could be better than this my friend like this is the journey like the beer journey that maybe we will do too one day yes exactly this is inspiration this is like a trip that i've always wanted to take just traveling around ireland testing different pints of guinness from pub to pub trying to find the best possible one it, so yeah man i saw that i thought that was perfect for you you know based on also our origins and how we met. I mean, come on, what could be more perfect than that? And I'm really curious. I might want to borrow that off you when you're done with it. Oh, for sure, my friend. I'm sure you will hear, you, you hear me talk about it. Like when, when a book says in search of the perfect pint, Guinness, like what better? What, what, what more better do you need? Can, what better, better book can there be? <laughs> Are there a lot of visuals in it? It's uh, not too visual. Like I've, at least I haven't seen any. It looks like it's more like, um, a story like you're saying dense. So, it's dense i'm looking forward to <laughs> diving dense into text. it it's an intellectual book my friend you need to treat that like a textbook it, it, there's no time for pictures <laughs> okay visuals are for children you need to dig deep into that with holding a pint of guinness drinking probably multiple pints of guinness and read it from beginning to end in no more than three sittings and you need to study this and fully understand this person's journey in finding the perfect pint of guinness it's a learning experience. I, I think it should be, and I, and I like the fact that it's uh, you know, the, the uh, here the homework has like involves like drinking pints of Guinness together with it. So yeah, absolutely. I'll, I I'm up for it, my friend. Like, thank you so much. Like, this is a fantastic <laughs> gift. Like, and I'm, I can't wait to start it. This is gonna be amazing. Thank you, thank you. This was a fantastic gift as well. I'm just gonna be like, I'm just gonna sit at home and browse through this when I do my evening beer meditation. I'm just gonna open this up and read through, but a couple of different beers and cheers. Mr. Michael Jackson himself on the front cover there. My friend, our second annual Christmas beer brackets, beer gift exchange is complete. That was so cool. Thank you so much. This has like a sticker on the front, almost low, as though like uh, it's been around. I love these kinds of books where it's like repurposed, where somebody passes it on after using it. I love that because it has a history. It means other people have enjoyed its contents and have wished to pass it on. I love it. And it's called just the, the title, The Great Beer Guide. What more do you need? My friend, not to put aside or discard these delicious beers that we're drinking, but I think we should be closing our Christmas beer brackets right about now. I'm almost done anyways, but. It's time, my friend. I can't wait. Just, man, that first one did not disappoint. And I'm, I gotta say, I have not seen you this excited about revealing beers <laughs> since probably, I don't even remember the last time I saw you this excited about revealing beers. So go right ahead, let me know what is this Oh, amazing second beer you have in store. Yeah, I think I think you're right. It's because I uh, I found these two beers like, a few days apart from each other, and I just thought they were perfectly fitting uh, with with uh, you know with the whole uh, theme. And so that's kind of like why I think like I got like overly excited here. But let's <laughs> get into. It. 
Yeah, this come on. What are you drinking? Second beer that I'm closing my beer brackets with. Uh, this oh. is the Delirium Noel uh, from, and I, I'm, I'm going to mispronounce this, so I apologize for the Puget Brewery, probably. If it's, uh, I hope it's uh, I did justice to the brewery, but it's an amazing uh, beer uh, that they brew every year for Christmas. And what I like about it is that it has this uh, little pink elephant uh, on the label. I love the little elephant. It yeah. comes from their Delirium Tremens uh, beer that then has also the Del Delirium Nocturnum. One fun thing, uh, and again, that we could talk about this beer at the brewery for hours, but one thing I wanted to mention that I found out is that there is, in fact, the order of the pink elephant, which is an order what? of people that is promoting not only the brewery, but traditions in Belgium. And I'm going to tell you this, that I really? found out recently, Michael Jackson was actually part of that order. You've come full circle with this. Ever since our Halloween episode, I mean, obviously we've had an intertwined relationship with Michael Jackson, but you have really, with these two, with your gift and this closing beer, you've done very well, my friend. <laughs> you've done almost an inspired job in choosing beers, I must say. The Order of the Pink Elephant. Oh my lord. Yeah. Okay, I need to know more. <laughs> We need to do almost, I think we need to do an episode just on the order of the pink elephant, actually. I smell an upcoming Inside the Bracket episode <laughs> on that beer legend. That's what I'm thinking. It's, it's such a cool legend. So that's why I don't want to get too, I don't want to give too much information. And what are you closing with your beer brackets with, my friend? This beer, we've already talked about this beer. It's not on an episode that's posted on the channel, but if you caught our live stream with uh, Nathan from One Man's Odyssey that we did uh, a couple of months back, but this is one of the beers I had there and I felt so sad because it's not an episode that's posted up on the channel. I talked about this beer and it, it was such an incredible beer that I just felt bad that it wasn't featured on the actual channel. And the thing is, you know, when you think of winter and Christmas, you think of sitting by, sitting by the fireplace, doing a little bit of beer meditation, sipping on your, sipping on your lager, sipping on your porter, sipping on your stout and listening to the, uh, the licks of the flames as they burn through the, the sinews of the wood. And you think of being warm, you think of a campfire, so that makes me think of smoked beers. And so this beer, my friend, is one that I have been holding on to for a little while because I didn't want to feature on the channel again. It's from a brewery called Church Key, uh, located here in Ontario, out in Campbellford, Ontario. And I've already told you about this, so it's not too much of a surprise, but I really, really wanted to show all our viewers out there because this is such an incredible beer. So they call this their holy smoke. But what's interesting about this beer is that they use traditionally brewed with Scottish peat smoked malt. So I'm assuming I did a little bit of a digging around. I even tried contacting them through their site. I didn't get a response. I know they're super busy. They brew out of a little church out in Campbellford uh, that they bought and repurposed as a brewery, which is really cool. And that's why it's called Church Key Brewing Company. But from what I understand is that they buy in these Scottish peat smoked malts that they brew this particular beer with. So they're not actually doing the smoking in the church. I imagine when I first saw this, I imagined this little <laughs> beat down rickety church with no windows and they just you know burning all this beech wood and smoking their malts they don't smoke their own malts from what i understand um and it doesn't claim that they do either and peat smoked is really interesting so that you know brings about all those thoughts of scotch and whiskey that are just you know that peaty dark smoky goodness let's pour these out my friend let's show everybody at home what these two beers look like and let's close our christmas beer brackets for 2021 Oh, right away, it's like just smelling the bottle. It's like smelling, I, I said the same thing with the Schlenker La Marza and it's like your clothes after you're sitting by a campfire all night. Oh, it's so delicious. See, one thing I like about the Delirium or the Huygen uh, brewery bottles is that they are have this coating on them. They make them look almost like they're ceramic. They're made out of ceramic. They're just glass. That's bottles. right. They have yeah. This coating on, so it makes them so yeah. intriguing in particular. That's what I've always kind of. It's so. I mean, it's funny that you say ceramic. That's what I think of when I think of the delirium. Like these little kind of ceramic bottles that almost look like milk bottles right. or something. It's it's super super dark. It almost looks like um like a dark quad almost in the sense yeah. that it's got a very dense, highly like 
thousands of little bubbles, very carbonated head on it. The furthest thing from a creamy beer, it's just a very highly carbonated dark ale. Wow, Romas are like a little bit like dark toast, like dark burnt toast mixed with that sort of campfire, fresh campfire smell. A little bit of chocolate, maybe a little bit of vanilla, some sweet undertones like that. What does your smell like over there? Oh, it's, uh, I was I was trying to identify some descriptors, but it's it, uh, interesting coming from the, the Trappist beer, how already the smell is way lighter and more, a little bit more malt forward, uh, slightly yeah. sweeter on the on the on the nose at least. Uh, but it also has that like kind of Christmassy, a different type of spices, like a different blend of spices. But you can definitely tell it's yeah. a, it's a holiday beer. It has like some of those like a little bit of nutmeg, you know, cinnamon, and you it just invites you in the glass. Like I can't wait to get in, my friend. <laughs> cheers. Well, cheers, my friend. I already took a sip when you weren't looking, but I'll take another first official sip. Mm. It's all good. It's Christmas. <laughs> we made it to Christmas. <laughs> this one, it's so good. It's almost like a sour. It's really fruity and really sort of, uh, you know, like think field berries, think like mm. raspberry, blueberry, uh, mixed with like a little bit of like a caramelized cranberry, something along those lines, a little bit of sweetness added in. And then you add that dark smokiness to it. And so it's a really nice sort of mix of tartness and just really savory smoke. That's really delicious. That's nice. Do you feel like that uh, the peat is coming across like uh, in one way or or is it mostly just smoke? Yeah, it's 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 definitely less campfirey. Now I use that term again, campfirey than the, the Schlenkerla. Um, Cause I think with the Schlenkerla, you just get this effect that you can't reproduce. Whereas if you're just directly smoking your ingredients over an open flame of, you know, fresh burning beech wood, and that's freshly going into the beer. I think you're gonna get just an element there that you can't reproduce yeah. unless you're doing that directly. If you're buying in, let's say, how that would work when you're importing malts like that, that are treated or smoked or flavored. You, you know, there's, there's something lost from being fresh to, I would assume, to being imported. Um, so it's a little weaker, so it's not that really strong burning wood campfire. So it, it turns more into that, like you said, peaty. Yeah. Like a smoky scotch, where it's almost leathery more than campfire. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, on, on this one here, I mean, the, the flavor is absolutely Christmassy. Uh, you get that sweetness. Uh, it's it's a little bit more um, Die hard. alcohol. Well, it's 10%, so it's, it is it is 1% higher than the other. You you can feel the alcohol. Not in an unpleasant way, yeah. but it's it's definitely more present in this one than it was in the other one. And uh, but yeah, that, that classic uh, finish with all the Christmas spices, I call them Christmas spices just to make a generalization, but it, it's just very festive. And I don't know, it must be the elephant, but I, I, I just just puts me in a very festive state. Like I like that they have this pink elephant as a as a you know as a logo or, or main symbol. Like it just uh, I love that. It, it makes no sense, but maybe it makes all the sense in the world. My friend, this has been so much fun. I can't wait to dig in and check out my new Michael Jackson, my beer Bible. This is literally a Bible. It's a beer. I love it. It's so thick and, and luxurious. And like, there's so, there's so many beers. It's insane. I can't wait to look up all my favorite beers and see what Michael Jackson had to say about them. His own little blurbs. It's going to be interesting. And, and the same kind of idea, like I'm going to... I'm gonna be taking notes here, my friend, so that when we go to Ireland, we, we know where to go for the perfect pint. <laughs> this is coming. This is coming. I can't wait. Everybody, happy holidays. Thanks for joining us. Hopefully, this added to your holiday celebration a little bit. Hang out with Alessandro and I as we kind of have our little Christmas party here and celebrate. Cheers to everybody there. Thanks for joining us. Take care. Don't forget to let us know down below, actually. What are you opening and closing your Christmas beer brackets with? What's your go-to beer for your holiday? Your holiday, I was about to say Halloween. What's your go-to beer for your Christmas parties at home with, with friends or family? Let us know. We're curious. Do you have a go-to Christmas beer? Let us know down below. Super curious to know. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, guys. And no matter what, don't forget to close your beer brackets. <laughs>